Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Majora's Mask! Last time, we got our Ocarina back, so let's go pay a visit back to the Happy Mask Salesman to get our true form back. Oh, yeah, so I did. For some reason, I play horns instead of a flute as Deku Link, but whatever works. Where did you get that pipe organ from? There's no room for that in here. What? That's it? Just your theme song? I'm not holding my breath on this one. So, how's that supposed to help? Dude? Oh yeah, I was kind of surrounded by Deku Scrubs. But, uh... Okay, they're just fading away? What, you just took his face off? Oh. Okay. Hooray! It worked! Somehow. Uh, sure, sure, why not? Oh, okay. Oh, good! So, yeah, now we can turn into Deku Link at will whenever we want to put on or take off the Deku Mask. The first transformation mask of the game. And there are a lot of masks in general. So there will be quite a few times when you're going to need to be able to uh, turn into Deku Link there. But yeah, easy enough there. Let's get out of here. Well, what do you mean? I don't have anything for you, dude. <laughs> I like how Tattle's just like floating in and out of the salesman's luggage there. Oh, your mask. Whoa! Don't ever open your eyes again! Ha ha. How are we supposed to get that thing back, anyway? Oh, okay. Who's Majora? Saint Majora? No. No, that's another game, viewers. Cursed content? Whoa! Okay. So? What? Holy cow. Couldn't... Why don't they ever, like, kill or destroy anything in this series? Why do we always have to seal it away? Couldn't we just deal with the problem permanently? No. Well, somehow, I don't think you're gonna be that much better off with the mask than the Skull Kid. I, I don't know. Call me crazy. But maybe we should just, I don't know, throw it into a volcano or something. Well, I've got nothing better to do. Sure, why not? Oh, what's that? So yeah, this is a minor change they made to the 3DS version of the game. Where you get the... What is that? The Bomber's Notebook uh, from the Happy Mask Salesman. I'll show you how you get it in the Nintendo 64 version of the game at the end of the episode. But for now, we got this here. So you don't have to remember everything for later. It all shows up there like all that stuff about NPCs 
or events or achievements or whatever. Yeah, it's all tracked in that book there. So yeah, it'll automatically update whenever you find something important. Oh, yeah, I believe. But, uh, alright, I'm getting out of here. Okay, so let's see. We got the Bomber's Notebook. Let's head on over to the lottery. Now that we know what the winning numbers are going to be, we can guarantee our success. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know what that was all about. Oh. Well, that makes it pretty straightforward. Oh. Okay, yeah, sure, why not? So, yeah, to get to the swamp, which is the first area we're supposed to go to, you would, well, just go straight south there. But before we do that, as long as we're here, let's see. Well, in order to place a bet at the lottery, I need to, uh, what is it? Yeah, I need to have 10 rupees. So let's uh, withdraw some of those now. Oh, wow. We're getting pretty close to 200 there. But uh, let's see. 10. Yeah, that ought to be good enough. And you got to do this before 6 p.m. here. Once you do that, or don't do that, or once it's past 6 p.m., it's too late. And just like the Deku Playground minigame... Uh, to get the Bomber's Notebook entry for the lottery here, you have to win it on three consecutive days. So, let's see. If I recall correctly, the numbers are 950. There we go. And just make sure to come back here between 6 and 11 p.m. Let's see. Okay, so one thing I want to show you guys is how we're supposed to know that inverted song of time that I used last time to slow down the flow of time. You see on the bottom of the top screen, they got that uh, icon right next to the time there to the right. That tells you that the passage of time has slowed down, so we have plenty of time to do everything we want. So let's see. You got the scarecrow here, but that's not what I'm here for. Okay, so now we get some additional dialogue there. Well, we already have the one, but, uh, sure, why not? Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's how you're supposed to know to get the inverted Song of Time. And this is another one, Song of Double Time. In the Nintendo 64 version, that allowed you to skip to 6 p.m. or 6 a.m., just like you could with the Scarecrow there. But in the 3DS version, you can jump forward to any hour of the current day. So that's pretty nice. If you're trying to do specific side quests, it makes things a lot more convenient so you don't have to sit around waiting for everything to happen. But all right, let's see, we're done there. I want to head to East Clock Town because, well, now that we don't, ha or now that we are no longer Deku Link, there's another chest that we can get. By the way, you might notice on the mini-map there, that chest up there is, well, it's back now. And that's because, well, we went back in time, so the contents are refilled. And if you wanted to, every time you uh, go play the Song of Time to go back to day one, you could get all those chests over and over and over again if you really wanted to. I don't think that's necessary. There are faster ways of getting rupees, especially later in the game. But for now, I just want to get each chest once, and that's all. Okay, so let's see. Up here... Yeah, you gotta roll off the ledge there so you can make that jump. And then just keep on hopping over here... Ha-ha! And then all the way around here... Yeah, you can't make those jumps as Deku Link. They're just too far. But, yeah, as regular Link, 
we can get over here for another silver rupee. Let me see if I can uh, pull off a jump here for something amusing. Ah, oh, man. If you jump off that platform at the right angle, for some reason, Link, or the game won't detect your, the collision with of the ground there, and Link will just sink right through there. <laughs> it's kind of an amusing graphical glitch, but uh, everything else works normally. Okay, so yeah, we're on max rupees here. I need to well, deposit as much of that as I can, I think. Let me see. What do I got coming up? Nothing that really requires money, or at least not much. Let's see. I'll hold on to 10 rupees. So yeah, let's just deposit those. And for depositing a total of 200 rupees, now we can hold 200 rupees ourselves. Hooray! And there's another reward that you can get from that for collecting 5,000 rupees. I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. I usually save that for practically the very end of the game because acquiring rupees then is immensely easier. But hey, if you want to do that now, hey, go nuts. I'm just not going to do it because it takes too long at this point in the game. Okay, so let's see. If you recall, the Great Fairy said that if we regained our true form, that she would be able to help us again. So let's head on back to... Oh, I'm going to need the mask. Uh, yeah, let's head on back to the laundry pool, collect the stray fairy there. And let's see... Yeah, let's uh, take the Deku Mask there. Just drag it over to whatever button you want. Well, that was overly dramatic. But all right. There we go. We got the Stray Fairy again. But in order to get the reward that we want, we need to see the Great Fairy as... Uh, well, not Deku Link. I almost said Human Link, but no, uh, Hylian Link there. Okay, so let's see. Oh yeah, there's something else I want to do over at East Clock Town. Hey, get away from me, man. And I'm going to need to be uh, Hylian Link in order to do this part. So let's see, I want to go back to the... Uh, what was it? The mayor's residence here. But I need it to be... Uh, 10 a.m. So, yeah. In order to advance the time there in the 3DS version... Yeah, you can just go to whatever hour you want. If you're playing the Nintendo 64 version of the game, you get to wait. Maybe just try not using the inverted song of time at this point. Okay, so yeah, Gorman shows up there. I didn't want to make it 11 a.m. Because then they would be talking and I wouldn't be able to do what I want to do. But yeah, if you recall, at least I think someone said something about... Uh, what was that? Well, we'll just talk to her now and figure it out. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, uh, good, good. Thanks. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I've never heard of them. Oh, hmm. Well. No, I have no idea who that is, but uh, sure, why not? So if we're agreeing to help her out, we get Cafe's mask. Have I seen someone who looked like that before? Eh, it's probably just my imagination. But, uh, alright! So yeah, this starts part of the Anju and Cafe side quest, and we're not going to be able to do much with it for quite some time. I mean, we could do some of it now, but there's... I'm going to save it for later, so don't worry about it. Let me see if I can get another uh, Bomber's Notebook entry over here. I've already shown the dialogue. I'll just skim through it. So. Huh? 
No? Okay, I guess they don't give us the notebook entry for that one. Oh well. I thought maybe I could... There is a... Not really a side quest, but there is a reward that you can get for settling their argument. Okay, so let's see. Over here at the... Uh, was it North Clock Town? In, at, at the top of that tree, there's a heart piece, but we couldn't get it before because, well, you couldn't jump far enough as Deku Link. But as Human Link... Let's see, get over there... Haha! -ha! Yeah, we can get it. And there we are. Let's uh, head on over to the fairy's fountain there. Because, yeah, we got that stray fairy. And we can get a different reward. A much more terrifying reward, if I do say so myself. Can I get something other than more magic? How's it going? I want to light, lighten up on that eyeliner there. Oh, okay, sure. Puff puff massage? Whoa! Hey, w what are you doing to me? Hey, watch where you're sticking that thing! Oh, really? Well, yeah, the temples are the dungeons of the game there, and each of them have 15 stray fairies. And if you collect them all and return them to the corresponding fairies fountain, you'll get even more good stuff. And we got whatever that thing is. Ah, there we go. Mask number two, Great Fairies Mask. And so that'll enable you to find stray fairies more easily. And sometimes you'll need to use it because like a fairy will be way out of reach. But if you are wearing the great fairies mask, they'll just automatically come right to you. So that's pretty nice. Oh, I'm doing just fine. Fortunately, I don't lose my heart containers or magic whenever I play the Song of Time. In the Nintendo 64 version, speaking of that, we, the Song of Time has another function as well. So I'm going to be showing that off in uh, just a minute here. So I'll meet you back in the alternate universe in the Nintendo 64 version to show some differences for recent events. Okay, we're back in the Nintendo 64 version of the game, uh, just outside the Bomber's Tunnel to the Astral Observatory, and, well, I figured as long as I'm in the in the area here, I wanted to show an alternate cutscene you get when if you're in the Bomber's Tunnel or the Astral Observatory when it strikes midnight in the first cycle there. Uh, I did not know about this cutscene or this alternate version of it until someone pointed it out to me. So, thanks. So, yeah, I guess they assume you're at the Astral Observatory for the camera angle that we're getting here. But, uh, yeah, it's basically the same cutscene, just from a different angle or something. But everything still opens up and everything just like before. But I do like how we get to see a little bit more of what's outside of of Clock Town itself. But, uh, okay, that's everything I just wanted to show you there. Uh, I will beat you right when we learn the Song of Time while fighting against the Skull Kid there. Because there's something else I want to show you that's different there, too. Okay, we're back. So, yeah, we got the Song of Time. Although I do need to bind the ocarina to one of my uh, C buttons there in this version of the game. So, yeah, just bring out the ocarina and then, yeah, play the Song of Time. 
Now, in addition to resetting the cycle of days back to day one, this also lets you create your permanent save files in the Nintendo 64 version. And it's the only way you can do that. The Owl statues don't let you make permanent save files in this version for some reason. So, uh, but there is a way to circumvent this problem that I'll show you in a bit. But now I'll just meet you after we learn the Song of Healing and we're back to Hylian Link. Okay, we're back on the first day here of the second cycle now. And let's see. So in this version, you don't get the Bomber's Notebook from the Happy Mask Salesman. You have to... Well, I'll show you what you need to do. Go talk to the kid, get into the tunnel. Let's see. So five... Yeah, my code's a little different in this version of the game. There we go. And then, let's see. Go into the tunnel... And then come back out of there, and something will happen if you do that. We don't. You don't need to go all the way to the observatory or or anything like that. Just in and out for some reason. Okay, how's it going? Remember, they said that they wouldn't let uh, Deku Link join the bombers, but as Hylian Link, we can. Oh, uh, thanks. I can I I can read your mind. Oh yeah, I think they were talking about something with that. Hey, hey all right. So yeah, this is how you get the notebook in this version of the game. Now, one thing to keep in mind though is well, there's two differences. Uh, one is that anything you did before. The you got the bomber's notebook. Uh, it still counts towards completing those side quests, but it won't show up in your in, in the notebook there. Like like there's that one with the guy in the toilet at the end, right? You got a heart piece from him. You still got that heart piece, but in order to get that quest to show up in the bomber's notebook in this version of the game. You have to just talk to the guy again, and then he shows up, and the... What was that? And the uh, quest entry shows up in there. Ah, I didn't think you knew her name, but uh, yeah, so they update things differently. And there's also a lot more entries to get into the notebook in the 3DS version of the game. Such as, uh, what was it, like the lottery, you didn't have to bother with that in this version of the game, so that's why I didn't do that. And money is not a problem at all here, as far as that's concerned with the, the notebook there. If you want to look into the notebook, just go to your quest status, there it is. So if, like, you forgot the bomber's code, or whatever you got, you can still get that right here. And I do want to go over here to get that 100 rupee chest. Although, in this version of the game, I already got the adult's wallet there. Because, well, money's a lot easier to come by with all that Deku Playground uh, stuff going on and all that. I still couldn't show that jump. You gotta do it at, like, just the right angle in order to get that to work right. But okay, let's see. There is one more thing I want to show you that happens at about 2 to 4 p.m. But uh, first, let's check out the owl statues. Yeah, in this version of the game, to unlock them, you need to hit it with your sword. That's why you couldn't save until now. Now, unlike the 3DS version of the game, when you save at an owl statue, it's only a temporary save file. So if you, you know, turn off your Nintendo 64 or however you're playing it, that save, or well, wait a minute. 
Well, yeah, once you load that save file, you will... Uh, the save file will be gone. So, it, it, the only way to make a permanent save file is with the Song of Time. But, there is a way to kind of circumvent that problem. Just copy your file, move it over there. So that way, you still have a save file in the event that you screw something up or whatever. I mean, not that there's really much of a problem there, but th that's a way you can get around that issue with this particular version of the game. I heard that in the original Japanese version of the game, the owl statues wouldn't even let you make temporary save files. All you had was the... Uh, what was that? Oh, right, I gotta wait until 8 o'clock. But yeah, all you had was the Song of Time to save at all. So, yeah. I heard there was, like, quite a lengthy process to bring this game to North America as far as, like, things they updated and developed and all that. Or, like, bugs to fix and things like that. There's quite a few differences between this version of the game and the Japanese one. But, uh, I'm not, uh... What was it? Yeah, I'm not gonna show every single difference with every single version of the game. But, uh, okay, let's see. So now, see, it's almost 12.30, so, yeah, 2.30 will be good enough. So, basically, I'm just advancing time as quickly as I can to get to what I want to do. Okay, so now, I need to get back to the front desk before 4 p.m. there. And, okay, so you see the postman leaving. Once he's done there, you talk to Anju, and if you recall... There was that Goron, who is also named Link, who has a reservation at this hotel, or the inn. And in this version of the game, you can steal the Goron Link's reservation here. In the 3DS version of the game, they added an additional requirement to being able to fool her into thinking you had a reservation at the ho at the inn here. So, it's not incredibly important, but, well, I just thought I'd show you. Here's another way you can get even more money in this version of the game. So, you get into the room here. They got a chest with another silver rupee. So, yeah, now you can get even further ahead on money compared to the 3DS version of the game. So, yeah, just another thing I sh I thought I'd show you guys here. But, uh, yeah, I'm not going to take advantage of it in the 3DS version because, well, you can't. It's not as simple as just giving her your name. Let's just put it that way. But how simple would it be to get out of Clock Town? Find out next time on Let's Play Majora's Mask. This is H.G. Bailey signing off. Have a good day.